Hello everyone and welcome to another video. If you're just starting your programming journey or you have some basic experience but don't know where to start with Python, this is your video. Today we're gonna cover how to get up and running with Python on a Windows machine. We're gonna learn how to install the latest version of Python and set up our development environment. We'll look at the tools that come with the default installation and we're gonna write and run our first Python script together. So stay tuned and let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna look at how to install Python 3 in Windows. If you already have Python installed on your machine, you can skip this installation process by clicking on the timestamps I've linked in the description below and join again at the time when we're ready to write some code. First off, let's open up the Windows command prompt to assess whether Python is already installed in our operating system. So click down here on the start menu and then search for CMD. To see if you have Python installed, type python dash dash version in the command prompt. You will then either get the actual Python version, in my case 3.8 as I already have it installed, or an error message saying Python is not recognized. Okay, to install Python on a Windows machine, you'll first need to open an internet browser and go to Python website, which is python.org. From here, we can click on downloads and you'll see that it's already detected that we are on a Windows machine and it has offered up Python 3, which is the latest major version. So let's proceed and to download this one. Click on it. And if you want to, you can always scroll down and download another version, even Python 2. Though I would highly recommend you to start directly with Python 3, unless you have a good reason to stick with version 2. Let's go ahead and run the downloaded file. We should get this pop-up window now. Okay, this is an important step. Whether you click on install now or customize installation, you need to click down here to add Python 3 to your path. This will allow us to basically run the Python command from anywhere in our system. Um, so make sure you click on this checkbox to avoid configuring stuff ourselves later on, and then click through this installation process. If you've ever installed software before, then a lot of this will look familiar. So we're just going to agree to some terms. And as I've already have it installed, I'm gonna skip this, but make sure you make it till the end until the installation wizard says that Python setup is completed. Once it's done, let's come down here and open up again the command prompt. You might wanna double check that Python is already installed by retyping Python dash dash version. If you don't see a similar output, please let me know in the comment section below and I'll reach out and try to troubleshoot with you guys. Cool. So now instead of typing python dash dash version, let's just type python to open up the interactive prompt. We can see that it shows that we're running python version 3.8 and now uh, the interactive prompt allows us to write one line of python code at a time. So for example, if you've seen in other languages or in most programming tutorials, the first thing you learn is to write the hello world application. So we can just print hello world and we can see that it prints that out. Cool. We can do all sorts of things now. For instance, we can declare a variable called h and set its value equals to, I don't know, 15. We can check that value and we can manipulate its variable as well as typing uh, h minus five and then we get 10. This is cool to test few single commands, but what we really want now is to work with Python files so we can write multiple lines of code and run an entire script. So let's exit this interactive prompt by typing exit and then open and close parentheses. To create a Python file, we're going to need some kind of plain text editor such as a notepad. However, when we install Python, apart from the interactive prompt, we also install what is called the Python editor idle. Okay, let me open up Python idle. We see it's kind of similar as the command line we've been using so far. It is also an interactive prompt. We can tell that because of those three arrows at the start. Let me just increase the font size just a sec. I can go to options and configure idle. Okay, much better now. To create a new file, we can go to file and then new file. This will pop up another window where we can write multiple lines of code and actually make a script. So for the first script, let's just print out hello world like we did before. 
but since we want to test that we can actually write multiple lines, let's just first define a string variable called greeting equals hello world in either single or double quotes to tell Python interpreter that this is actually text. And then in the second line, I'll type print, open and close parentheses, and inside this, I'll use the variable called greeting. Now we want to save this file by clicking on save, and I'll name this script example.py. I'll save it to a folder called demo inside my desktop. Now what we want to do is go back to the Windows command prompt. Let me clear the screen first. And to run the script file, we just need to type Python and then the file name. Now beware that when you type Python and then file name, this file needs to be relative to the directory that you are in the command prompt. In our case, we've saved the file in a folder in my desktop called demo. So let me first move to that folder and then list out the files. And here it is, example.py, the file we just created. So if I now type python example.py, we see the output we were expecting. As a test, let me move to another directory, for instance, I don't know, desktop, and let me execute the same command from here. So if I now type python example.py, python now throws an error saying it cannot find the script. Instead, if I type python demo slash example.py, since the file exists in that demo folder, it will not complain and will be able to execute the code. So from here, we can keep editing the file and write more lines of code. Let me move the script aside. So for example, let's upgrade our greeting in this lovely sunny day. We can define a new variable called better greeting and we'll set it to greeting. So both variables have the same value plus everyone in double quotes again. To tell Python interpreter, we are concatenating two variables of the same type, type string or text. And finally, let's just print that out. Let's save the file and go back to the command prompt to test that out. Let's run python example.py and we see both prints. Awesome. One last thing before finishing this video is along with the interactive prompt and the idle, we should have also installed pip. Pip is a package management tool for Python. The use of pip is a bit more advanced, but for now, let's just verify that we can type pip dash dash version in our common prompt. Cool. In short, pip basically lets you install packages and dependencies for your scripts. So as an example, say you want to work with dates and times within your script, then you can use the datetime library. If we type import datetime, we can see that Python has loaded this module. You can then make use of it by calling some of the classes and methods from this module. For example, we can call datetime.datetime.now and we'll get the current date and time. If we run the same command again, we'll get a different time. Cool. So what about pip? Well, say you didn't know that datetime comes by default, right? Then you could type pip install datetime and you will get this message saying that the library is already present. As another example, say we want to manipulate data with Python using the pandas library. Then if we do the same stuff and type import pandas, we'll get an error saying that the module is not found. But we can use pip to install this library by typing pip install pandas. See that it's downloading all required packages from the internet, and once done, we can try again, and we'll see that the Python can now import the module. Cool. Lastly, before wrapping up, I want to briefly talk about code editors and IDEs. So we've seen how to create a Python script using Python Idle. You could also utilize Windows Notepad, which is another out-of-the-box text editor. However, if you want some advanced functionalities, popular text editors are Sublime Text and Atom which are open source and cross-platform. They provide nice features such as syntax highlining, code refactoring, the ability to run your script without typing in the commands in the command prompt, and you can even install plugins on them to customize your coding experience even more. Apart from text editors, you can also use IDEs. IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. 
One of the most popular IDEs out there is Visual Studio Code by Microsoft that works out for any programming language. And specifically for Python, you also have PyCharm by JetBrains. IDEs gives you extra functionality that simply takes editors down. Some of the functionalities are intelligent code completion or the ability to debug your application from the environment. So let me show you this. Let me open up Visual Studio Code and find our example.py. I can import datetime and define a new variable equals datetime dot and see it's giving us some hints about the classes and methods that we can apply in this module. Let's save the file and run it by clicking on run and then run without debugging or using the shortcut. Then we'll see down here that we get the same output without typing in the command line ourselves in the command prompt as we were doing before. So it saves us time. So that was everything I wanted to show you today. At this point, Python is up and running on your Windows machine and you should be ready to explore the wonders of it. To recap, we looked at how to install Python on Windows, how to run Python interactively from the command line, and how to create a Python file and execute that script using idle or another text editor. If you want me to make a similar video for other operating systems like Mac or Linux, let me know in the comments below and I'll make sure to give you that content. If you need more resources, I'll leave you a few Python links down below that cover basic concepts. If you are an experienced developer, there's also other links that cover advanced topics such as machine learning, hacking, or how to build your websites with Django. If you have comments or doubts about what we've covered today, feel free to ask in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer those. As always, if you enjoyed this video, there's few ways you can support me. The easiest way is to like the video and subscribe to the channel or sharing this video with others that might find it useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video.